uh, the markets are beckoning. So I'm just going to pause this here. Looks like we got a minus thousand tick reading. Uh, let me see what uh, slide I ended up on here. Wow, we may actually get some action here into the close. I'm pretty excited. Although uh, right now I'm missing it. Let me just see which one I uh, stopped on here. So we're on about 32. Okay, that's good to know. A credit event. All right, guys. So let me do this. I'm going to um, move this around a little bit. Uh, Google's breaking my heart here. I wanted to buy. I actually wanted to buy some puts on this earlier. That's okay. All right, so let's let's get our charts up here. Oh, I can look at the Russell today too. Yesterday I was doing a webinar for the CME and I started looking at the Russell and they're like, um, excuse me. I was like, oh, my bad. I took that away from you. You guys should have manned up and paid up for it because it's a good contract. Put that there. I like having that clock there because when you're trading, you just stare at the screen. You don't really stare at the time. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Now, I also want to get a, um, I'm just going to get a chart of Apple here too, just because it's a good stock to trade. And we need to get the ticks going here. Take me just a second to get everything in place. Ah, there we go. Wow, nice tick reading there, guys. All right, so when you get an event like this, Oh, Apple five minute squeeze far enough short. Okay, if we can get a retracement in Apple, we'll buy some puts on that. Not ones that expire today. And we had a big big sell off here. We're starting to get in the pop. So we want to see this pop as an opportunity to get short. Ideally, we can get up to plus 600 or so. Oh, so the no, the clock. Well, the clock isn't uh, part of TradeStation. It's uh, if you go to C, like C L O C X dot net, um, you can just download it for free. I really like it. It's one of those that's a stay on top kind of a thing. Ah, okay. I'll get a drink of water there real quick. Okay, so I want to short this pop up here. I'm just waiting for my platform to fire up. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. Here we go. Computer's a little slow here. Um, ES, great. Infinity's taking a while to load here. I'm kind of surprised at that. Okay. So that is H. I don't want H. I think you were sharing that screen. Um, no, I'm sharing this one. Oh, I'm sharing it on that one. Yeah. That makes sense. That's right, there's two. So you can go into action and stop. Well, do your thing. The what? I was say I know if you want to stop it, it's this right here. Okay, there we and go. And cancel and then relaunch. You're gonna to want to quit that one, and then relaunch it from the app. And you may want to drag your trade station screen so it takes up more room. I guess that's up to you. I guess you're broadcasting your middle screen, so. Yeah, so we fine. Um, as soon as that launches, come let's on. See. Launch. There you go. That makes sense. 
All right. Perfect. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. So there, you guys should see the, the screen there. So, okay, we got this. All right. So I'm just going to pick up some contracts here on the Dow just to sell. Um, what I'm doing on this is we got a, a minus like 1200 tick reading. We're popping back up and I'm going to start accumulating a position. Now I'm looking at the S and P's here. If the S and P's rally back into 136670, that's another two points. So that'd be about a 20 points of heat here. I'd be willing to add to it. Okay. And let me look at, I don't need H. Okay, I'm just going to move this over. So we've got the Dow, and then I'm going to look here at the S&Ps and the Russell, and then also let me get a matrix for Apple. A little bit of multitasking here. Oh, that's why my trade manager window is open. It's a resource hog. If you guys use TradeStation, if you keep your trade manager window open, FYI, it is a resource hog and a half. You just want to shut it down and look at it after the market closes. Guys, I almost have the matrix here. So the 550s, 555. And so what I'm going to do too is for Apple, if we look at some trades here, I'm going to set up two domes, one for uh, what I call like a big trade and one for a uh, what I call small lot trade. Okay, sorry, it's taking me a little bit here to get all this set up. Okay, so big lot trade I'm going to do on the, these are the monthly options that expire next week. The big lot trade, I'm going to do the Apple 555s, small lot trade, the 550s. 550s got, they have a delta of like 65, that's, that's close enough. And, all right, so we've got the initial reaction here, now see kind of how the markets kind of settle up here. Okay, I'm going to move this matrix out of the way. Because now what we want to do is, now you want to forget the news. Don't concentrate on the news about Greece. What we want to do is look at the internals. And on the internals, we've got ASEAN is rolling over. Okay, the euro popped up here a little bit. Obviously, the S&Ps here sold off. So we've got the initial reaction. Ticks came down to minus 1,200. And now we just want to see, like, what does this market want to do? What is it going to do here? So on Apple, we've got a five-minute squeeze. I just want to look at an hourly chart here and see where the next kind of key levels of support are. Um, decent early support right now would be the 21 period exponential moving average, which is at 540, 28, so that's about four points away. So with a delta of 70, what you'd be looking at is four, um, four times 70, it would be a move of $2.80 in the option, okay? So let's see what can happen here. And at this point, when you see a reaction like this, you know, you just kind of wanted to sit back and let's just like see what happens. Um, I do know if the S&Ps can rally into this kind of clump of resistance here at about 1366, then I would want to short those. And then for Apple, let's just see if we get a little bit of a rally here. And again, ideally, it would be back to the mean at 544.98, give or take. And let me look at, I'm gonna, hold on this guy, I'm just gonna close this other workspace real quick.
All right, there we go. Oh, software, uh, Camtasia. All right, so. Would you look to hold a short position in the indexes over the weekend, depending on how the internals close? I'm actually intrigued by that idea, Jason. I, I'm honestly surprised this market has been as, as strong. Um, I think this market is going to go lower, but you can't fight you know, the resiliency that we're having here. So I'd say if the market does kind of reverse and puke you into the close, absolutely. If for some reason, you know, the market shakes us off and rallies, then, you know, it's just like, wow, this, there's a liquidity crisis right now. There's that sea of liquidity out there and it's got to find a home. And right now that's just kind of overriding everything else. Get that out of the way. All right, so this should be fairly interesting, which is nice because sometimes on Fridays, there's not much to do. All right, so the ticks hit that minus that extreme level. They've come back up. They're starting to roll back over. Apparently, I've got a, I'm getting a bunch of emails today about the movie John Carter that's coming out this weekend, so apparently I need to go see it so I can be in the loop. All right, so I'm going to uh, place some orders here for the S&Ps. I'd like to get it 1366.50 if we can get that. And then Apple, I'm just kind of watching to see if we can get up here a little bit more, a little bit more of a push. All right, so this is the uh, small lot trader. So I'm looking to do three to six lots. So I'm going to pick up one here. Okay, this is the Apple 550 put. And picking up one there. And then I want to large lot trader, meaning this is just my account, and I'll be doing some size on this one. I'm going to start off with 25 contracts. And... All right, let's see if we can get something going here. So on something like this, it really will tell us a lot about the markets. Now on Apple, I'd like to add to it on a move to 545, okay? On a, something like this, it'll, it'll, it tells us a lot about the market because if the market, you know, this is an event, okay? This whole thing with Greece came out, yada, 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 it's an event. And if the market shakes it off and rallies, it's like, wow, there's really something going on here that we just don't understand. That's fine. You don't fight it. But if, um, ah, darn, S&Ps. I really would like to get a pilot position here in the S&Ps. So, guys, I'm going to get aggressive here on the S&Ps just to get a pilot position. I just want exposure at this point. Okay, I'll still add to it up here. And Apple's not really rallying up here enough to get an extra position. And for Apple, remember, we're looking for 540. Oh, okay, so on this S&P trade, I'd like to build it up to 25 contracts. So five contracts is a one-fifth size. Okay, I'm going to add. I am going to add up here on the bigger account. Okay, but let me see here. On the smaller account, I would like to add it up. We can get a rally up here. Mm -hmm. 
be nice to get a nice crash into the weekend. Yes, so I am shorting ES and buying Apple puts. Yes. Um, so I'm adding, okay, let's see what we're going to get here. Remember on Apple, 60 minute support is 540. Uh, let me get a little bit bigger view here. Nice 15 minute squeeze. Maybe, and we might get a, let me see where the gap is on Apple today. Gaps of five, okay, so the 541 there. Yeah, Euro's still kind of just trading sideways. Russell, new lows. Should have shorted the Russell. Oh, nice. Greece officially in default. Now, here's the thing with this. This is not a big market event, okay? I know you guys might think it is, but the market's... The market's priced this stuff in, so it's going to be interesting to see just to see here how this reacts. It's not like, don't think like, oh, Greece event, then the markets collapse. Hey, I'd love nothing. I would love for that to happen, but remember, Greece is like the size of Virginia. So I mean, it's not like it's going to completely. It's not going to completely impact the world. It does show that there's underlying problems going on in Europe, uh, but just don't expect like this huge market collapse. So I just want to see. I'd just be happy if the S and P's go from being up four to down four. And anything beyond that would be a bonus. So the 15 minute squeeze on Apple may fire off as well. All right, so ticks, we got that extreme tick reading. We popped up, we rolled back over. Now on the ticks, if we start holding the zero level rolling back over, that means we're gonna get some nice selling. Oh, and Craig, I absolutely agree. This, the problem in Europe is huge. Have you guys read um, uh, what was um, Greece is kind of the tip of the iceberg kind of thing. It's um, uh, what was the book? Um, who's the guy who wrote the Big Short? Why can't I think of his name? He just wrote a book on the uh, develop on uh, Iceland and and Greece and all that. Boomerang is that it? Michael Lewis, Boomerang. It's a great book. If you guys, it's you can read it in four hours. If you guys want to really understand what's going on in Europe, read that book. It's it's really good, and he's a he's a great writer, a great storyteller. Exactly. So we got Italy and Spain on the edge. So so Greece is kind of the tip of the iceberg. My point with it is that well, first of all, believe it or not, America is in much better shape than Europe. Um, but what's happening in Europe is kind of a slow meltdown. So it's not like you're going to say, oh, Greece is in default, and then the market collapses. It's going to be a rolling effect. Greece is in default. Okay, then when is Italy going to be in default? And that's what's going to kind of chew away at confidence. Yeah, France. Uh, the book is Boomerang by Michael Lewis. You can get it on a Kindle. or uh, it's, it's, it's worth reading. You guys will really understand what's going on in they talk to Ireland. He talks Ireland, Iceland, and Greece. And I went to Iceland when that whole debacle happened, like a couple of years ago, and it was pretty amazing. If you want to go somewhere where the dollar is actually strong, I think I bought uh, an entire bar, a round of beers for ten bucks. Inflation there is rampant. Where is is Gundar? Are you here? Is it, we got one of my clients, or one of, one of my clients lives in Iceland. Hey, there you go. Yeah, I, I loved Iceland. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was a it was a great trip. It was a great place to visit. It was weird because we were there as like in July or something like that, and um, the sun would go down at one in the morning and come back up at four in the morning. That was really that was strange.
ten dollar. No, Becky, it's a good. Oh, so Becky, ten dollar beers for all is deflation. No, well, the reason why is because that the dollar was so the the uh, Iceland that kroner. If you if I would have used kroners, it would have been like hundreds of kroners, but the exchange rate collapsed. So, whereas like a year before, ten dollars was like ten kroners. Now at that point, it was like ten dollars was like two hundred kroners. So it was inflation in kroners, but the dollar didn't move. So it was, it was a currency play. Um, what happens with Greece? Will they be isolated? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I don't profess to be an expert on Europe, but you know, there's a real chance at some point that you know they got It's what 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 Germany has to decide is is Greece worth keeping in the union? Like, okay, for the sake of the euro currency, do we got to just carry Greece along, or do we kick them out? Now, if Greece gets kicked out, that will make things interesting. It's going to be like, what if, you know, if the U.S. decided, like, eh, you know what, Michigan, you're just not cutting anymore. Get the hell out of here. Create a little bit of a crisis of confidence. Yeah, I actually don't know um, how Ireland and Iceland are doing today, if they've recovered or not. I, as far as I know, Ireland's on the brink. Iceland may, I, I don't know. I think Iceland actually agreed to take on all the debt. So they've got to like raise taxes to a gazillion percent to pay it off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's a good point, Randy. Yeah, if Texas got kicked out of the union, I think everybody would move to Texas. Like, really? They're on their own? Uh, Don, we show us how to scan for good stocks to trade options. Yeah, that's what we do, Don, kind of in the nightly videos too. I mean, that's what we're doing is scanning for stocks. And um, but generally, the you know the radar screen in TradeStation is really really good for that. I mean, this is what I do. I'll show you the. I mean, I've got a couple of these screens. This is my miniature one. Um, but what I do is I've got you know Apple, Amazon, Baidu, Priceline, Netflix, Google, and Goldman Sachs on a five minute, fifteen minute hourly and daily radar screen. And then I can just sit there and say, okay, um, wow, you know, Amazon's in a 15-minute squeeze, bam, and it just shows me right there. And that's, I think, one of the easiest ways. I don't know how to do that in Think or Swim. All right, so markets here are stabilizing a little bit. You can see the S&P is kind of near the lows of this move. Again, I would like to add to it at 1366.50. We had the spike low, now we're just kind of hanging out here. So, you know, again, if this market just recovers and goes higher, I mean, that just tells us that the, liqui the, the liquidity crisis is full on in effect. Um, but if we can actually roll over and sell off here and close at the lows of the day, I mean, that's what I would like to see, but it doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. And at, let's see, where's Apple? So Apple, I would like to buy another one at 545. If we get up to 545, I'll buy another put on Apple. Oh, is that what happened? Okay, sometimes I might have gotten Iceland and Ireland mixed up. No offense. I'm just getting all the, all the numbers. All right, we're getting a high tick reading here. So I'm looking at this as an opportunity to get short. Let's see if I can get this... If I can get 1366 half here on the S&Ps, so I'm looking for next. Again, the idea here is you get the you get the you get the flush low, and then you kind of get the retracement, and then we'd look for the continuation move. Um, why not shorting a weaker stock like Google instead of Apple? Actually, that's, that's a great. Uh, Google would be just fine here too. In fact, probably a little better. Come on, push. Let's see if we just another another point here in the S and P's. Put call ratio is popping up here. A little bit of panic there. People buying puts. Let's see where the VIX is. 
So the VIX spiked up. It's just kind of leveled off here. Now let's look at open interest on Apple out of curiosity. The pins on Apple work better on monthly expiration. Let me see here. All right, let's look at the open interest on the weeklies. So open interest, 540. So the open interest at 540 is actually higher than the open interest at 545. So you got 7,200 puts and 11,000 calls versus, you know, it's not significantly higher, but it's higher. Wow, a lot of volume. 46,000 contracts on the 545s traded. All right. Well, darn it. I was hoping to get filled on the S&Ps here, but we're just obviously not. All right, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the restroom. You guys know what that means. The market will probably do something crazy. All right. Well, that was the quietest bathroom break ever. Maybe the market was just waiting until I got back. Um, JC, is there a difference between vol spread and the on-balance volume indicator found in many packages? Um, gosh, that's a good question. It sounds the same. I'd have to look at them. Carolyn, I hear you. Let's get some red. Let's get some. Let's get a crash into the close, just to kick off the week right. The ticks are acting good, guys, for a sell-off. I just, you know, this market has been extremely resilient. So that's my only hesitation is that this market has been able to shake off every piece of bad news. You would think that Greece defaulting would be really bad, but again, remember, the market expects a lot of this stuff. But the way that the ticks are acting is good. Okay, now the put call ratio is popping up. It does show that there's a little bit of panic going out there. Um, the main thing to watch, though, right now is the VIX and the ticks. So the VIX right here, it's starting to edge up a little bit. You can see as it's edging up, the ticks in the market are coming down, so that's good. We're just kind of a little bit in flux here. This is a bearish pattern. We spiked down, and now we're just kind of consolidating near the lows of that spike so so all this is bearish and now it's going to be you know going into the weekend do people want to be long or short and that's kind of what's going to dominate it and again this this market i wouldn't i just i, I wouldn't put anything past this market okay the 15 minute squeeze on apple just fired off short that's great i mean this, the market rally has been insane so if something like this can't derail it it's like wow there's something's going on in this market i for one of course am voting for a decline Ticks are negative. They're obviously not off the charts negative. Um, what would change this is if the ticks really, you know, went up to a plus 800 here and started hanging out. Option expiration next week, isn't it generally bullish? Um, actually, yes, generally. On average, not every time, but it, option expiration week tends to be bullish. Considering, I actually thought we'd get a little bit more action than this, but I, I do think we're going to get. I mean, I just, I would be shocked if we just traded sideways here into the close. You know, we either spike down five S&P points, or, you know, there's some short covering rally up five. I'm obviously rooting here for that first scenario. Ticks here, just very quiet. I'm really keeping an eye on the VIX here a lot too. S&Ps in a chop fest right here. Who do I believe? I say the market is going down and Hubert says it's going up. Yeah, I mean, every trader is going to be different. So 
you know, that's just, it's one of those things where humor and I, a lot of times are on the same page, but there are times when we completely disagree. I mean, when gold was going higher, like from 600 to 800, a thousand, I was bullish the whole way. And he thought I was insane. He's like, son, gold's not going to a thousand. Well then, but then, you know, he, he called the, the, you know, the last hundred point rally in gold to the T. So, you know, it just kind of depends like that. Are you concerned about holding the options over the weekend? Yeah, Brett, I am not planning to hold these options over the weekend. I'm just looking at this for a day trade. Yeah, Hubert's a really good gold trader. He's um he's really he's really narrowed in on that. Um, JC, was the Apple trade a pin trade or based on news or squeeze or what? So it's based on the squeeze. So if you look right here on the 15 minute chart and the five minute chart, you've got squeezes set it firing off. So what I'm looking for here is if the squeeze pushing down can actually push Apple to at least the gap fill, okay? And then there's support at 540. And so if we can get if we can get through this, then you've got support here. So that's what I'm looking at there. And um, yeah, Google looks good too. All right, so there's Apple, and now it's pretty quiet. Yeah. So yeah, the question is just how much. Yeah, again, we're we're going to know a lot about how much how much this was expected by the market's reaction here in the next 25 minutes. Um, the euro is still kind of hanging out at slow. So the euro is actually not having a reaction. So it's not like a, there's not like a relief rally. Sometimes things like that, you'll actually see a relief rally. All right. All right. Ticks here are popping up. Now, for right now, any strength in the ticks to me is a shorting opportunity unless, you know, we start getting like these plus thousand tick readings. Then it's like, wow, this thing's really going to rally. So right now I'm still trying to short the S&Ps at 1366 half. All right, that's still about a point away. Well, actually, I should bring that down because these moving averages have come down. Where is it? 13. And in fact, I think I just missed. I just missed it. So what happened is the moving averages came down. I still had my order up here. Darn, I think I may have just missed that, but we'll see. Uh, Ruby, what options did you buy? The 65... So then that just made be premium decay. I mean, if, you know, if it just kind of ground its way up there. Yeah, for options to work out, you really want it. I mean, the, the trade actually has to work out fairly quickly. You know, sideways markets kill the premium. Oh, you just bought it yesterday? Oh, that's kind of, that is kind of strange. Unless there was like a, I mean, I'm not familiar with the stock. Would you buy the 550 or the 550 puts on, or 555 puts on Google? Um, 550, you mean the 650? Yeah, you could, you, would, you actually don't have to go that far in the money. I mean, on Google, you could get like the 630 puts, even the 620 puts. Uh, which EMA do I use? That white one on Apple is the 21 period exponential moving average. I like that one. Okay, so I just got filled on my um, second order of uh, S&Ps. Now remember, if I want to get a full position here, I'm trying to get 25 contracts. So, and again, I'm watching the ticks here to see that, you know, do the ticks actually um, come up here and get smacked down? Like they're getting smacked down right now. That's good. But what we're not seeing is the big selling. We're not seeing the ticks go down to like minus 800, minus 1,000. So there's still some nervousness here. It's just, is this nervousness going to translate into enough selling to 
give us a profit. You ever use spreads to lessen the effect of time decay? Well, it's a good strategy. I actually just like to, um, you know, if I'm in a situation where, you know, the market kind of starts consolidating, I'm getting time decay, a lot of times I'll just close the option out and just wait, you know, maybe wait for another signal. Um, you certainly can use spreads that way. Or you can, you know, sell, uh, I mean, I do like vertical and ratio, and, uh, ratio spreads. Oh, thanks, Brooke. Yeah, the statement yesterday that I traded setups, not markets, was golden. Yeah, that was a real kind of an aha moment for me when that sunk in. Yeah, let me look. I'll look here. This is because this is a critical moment, guys. This is uh, we got 20 minutes left. You can see here the S and P's are trying to push through resistance. You know, ticks keeps trying to push up, but they're not really closing the deal. Apple's coming back to the mean. We're not getting any real buying here, but we're not getting any real selling either. So the question is, is if we don't get any real buying or real selling, then what happens is at some point traders start covering their positions. So, you know, are more people here short or long? Ticks just really, really quiet here. VIX is coming down a little bit. So just remember, as the VIX ticks lower, that's going to push the markets higher. That's kind of how that works. And the VIX is fast. The VIX is the fastest indicator. If you see it tick higher, then you'll see the market sell off. Yeah, vol spread is actually near its highs. A little strange, a little strange on the internals here. Part of what you need to do is ask yourself, you know, when you're watching the markets, it's like, would you rather be long or short here? So like, so like right now we're short, and then you're watching the market chop around, and you think, would I rather be long here? And it's kind of, you know, there's always two sides of the market, and I actually like to do that. It's kind of like, would I rather be long here? And right now the answer is no. Yeah, and that's a good point there. So yeah, thanks for posting that. Uh, so Aussie in here, you can see, is just rolling over pretty hard. It's actually usually pretty difficult for stocks to rally when the Aussie in is coming down this hard. I mean, it's showing that there's some panic. Hedge funds are taking risk off, and so it may be something where we get a flush. You know, I mean, you can see Aussie in has been selling off steadily since the news. That's showing you that hedge funds are taking risk off. Stocks here are kind of trading sideways, but it's actually very difficult for stocks to hold up in the face of Aussie in selling off. Okay, we're getting about 15 minutes left. Uh, where can you find that clock feature that you have bedded on your chart? Oh, let me, um, here, I'll get the link for you as we're waiting for apparently nothing here to unfold. Yeah. 
So here's the website. It's just clockx.net. C L O C x.net you just download it, it's free and then it just stays on top of your chart there it's a handy tool a oh, Windows 7 has a clock too yeah I have Windows 7 <laughs> a lot of things about Windows 7 I don't know I always just ask Henry Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, the high of the year is resistance at this point on the S&Ps, and eh, we're not really getting, at this point, if we're going to get some selling, we want to start seeing these ticks roll over here pretty quick. Oh, I wondered why this wasn't moving. Oh, okay, I'll take a look at that. Oh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. That, that's an interesting stock. Um, in fact, we can take a look at that real quick. Let's take a look at a couple of other ones here while we're waiting for the markets. That's a beating and a half. So this is a good example of Ivy Crush. So the news happens overnight at the open on something like this, you sell puts. So you sell the $50 puts, and then during the day, things calm down, and there you go. There's not much of a play to do on this today, except you sell puts at the open. Okay, and that's that Ivy Crush play that I've talked about. And then we'll see, on, and then on any rally here, then you'd buy puts for a directional play. And let's look at when, somebody was asking about when. Hmm, interesting. I haven't done a lot with when. I'll kind of we'll look at I'll look at that over the weekend too in the newsletter. All right. Anything going on here? Anything at all? Anything? So, so I'm, okay. Again, the main things I'm watching here is the ticks and the vix. In fact, I'll just put these up together. If the VIX here confirm and rally, market will go down, ticks will go down. Ticks here are just chopping back and forth. You got a lot of noise here. Yeah, the pain is drying. You would think, you would think that you would actually have some volatility here to the close, and we're just not getting it. Yeah, nice play, guys, on Google. Well played, well played. <laughs> one cent from getting filled. Yeah, that's always awesome. Okay, the ticks here are really choppy, guys. Um, now, just so to be clear, I'm actually not planning on holding any of this over the weekend, okay? On the weekend, you want to relax. So if we're not going to get a move here pretty soon, uh, we may just need to have to take the money and run here. Ticks very, very tight between plus and minus 200, which is nothing. That's like no activity. It's like buyers and sellers are kind of just staring at each other going, what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? Are you going to do anything? Are you going to do anything? No. It's like at a dance club. I'm trying to figure out who to dance with. Uh, John, I have a Google April 600 605 put spread. Does it mean that my option will not go up in value when Google drops to 600? Oh, you should be okay there. I mean, for you've got if it's April, that's fine. I mean, you want Google to go higher, but if it goes to like 600 today and just stops, that's fine. Yeah, the ES here is pretty exciting. I've just been watching it go from 1364.75 to 13.65. Or a dance at all, no kidding. 
Wow, guys, the ticks, man. They're now plus and minus 100. I mean, it is Friday afternoon. You just think, like, you know, with the news about Greece, you might get a little more action. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. Maybe I should get him to go to the bathroom again. Yeah, nice play on Google, guys. I was watching that this morning. What is it? 611. No, it was at 610. I wanted to buy the 610 puts. And then uh, our trainer showed up. We did a kettlebell workout, and I came back, and it was at 603. Again, I'm... I'm only paying the personal trader 90 bucks, but if you count that trade, then that was about a $10,000 workout. Does the contract rollover impact this? A little bit, a little bit. Hmm. Well, I keep looking to see if the ticks are going to flush, but it just it doesn't look like much. This is a, this is getting tricky now because it could go either way. Obviously, I'm not interested in a short covering rally at this point. All right. So for this S&P trade, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the risk off the table, meaning I'm going to place a stop right here okay I'm just gonna place a stop of one tick because at this point I don't want it to flush up and get me out maybe the market will be scared of my 10 lots and fall from here now the VIX is popping up a little bit that's good ticks aren't really coming down we got eight minutes So, yeah, we do have this put play on Apple, but again, I'm not looking to hold this over the weekend, guys, just to be clear. I just want to see if the markets are going to flush, if Apple could kind of flush, you know, down to the gap fill here at about 541.66. Now, we only got about seven minutes left. I've got to stop now in the S&P play. VIX is popping up. That's good. Okay, this actually is good right now. The VIX is popping up. That's going to put some downward pressure on the markets. Ticks aren't really following suit, but you can see that the S&Ps are dribbling down. We just need one hedge fund to blow out a position, that's all. That's right. Oh, you know what, guys? I am so sorry. I forgot to put my mouse here. So let me go ahead and put my mouse right here. So the ticks know where to go. That's right. Come on, don't be scared. <laughs> Put my mouse on Google, 590. Maybe I gotta wiggle it. You can see it. See right here. Come on. There you go. Don't be scared. You have friends down here. Come on. You've got friends. There you go. All right. Let's go ahead and move this stop down. Got a little flush. It's locking a point on the S and P's. Vix popping up. Oh, I gotta put my mouse back. Come on. Oh, come on, Apple. Let's participate. Oh yeah, there we go. See that's so that's the key. Now if you guys you want to if you guys want to rent out my mouse, just let me know.
So this is awesome for the S&P. So S&Ps, guys, let's lock in a point and a half here. Um, Apple, not really doing too much. Just a little disappointed in you, Apple. All right, stopped on the S&Ps for $812. We stop out on the Dow. And Apple here, yeah, come on, Apple. Just at least participate, that's all we're asking. It's not like you're announcing the app, iPad 4 or anything. I did order the iPad, the new iPad with Verizon 4G. So we're going to see how that works out. I did resist, uh, avoid AT&T. All right, guys, we only got five minutes. Um, let's see if we can get out of Apple here. I'm going to try at 1025. Okay, ticks popping back up. So this S&P trade worked out great. Um, Apple just really didn't play ball here. Didn't follow along. Don't know what its problem is. I'm going to go ahead and close out this position here for a little bit of a scalp profit. Let's see if we can get Okay, maybe not. <laughs> They're scared of my one lot. Oh, I've got my mouse in the wrong position, darn it. Okay, say so push. Hmm, all right. Guys, I'm just gonna flatten this. We don't have enough time. So $10, swapping $10 there. We got 800 bucks on the S&Ps. Um, the ones I did on the Dow ended up good for $1,400. And that's about it. Got a couple of minutes left. Not much else to do here. Let's see, that was that one, that was the Dow. And kind of a nondescript close. I'm glad we got out of Apple. Oh, same thing. I'm getting closing out. I'm just going flat over the weekend. I just, I really don't see any advantage to holding a, one of these positions over the weekend at this point. I like the Euro short quite a bit here. I think it looks a fantastic short. Yeah, if you guys want, um, yeah, if you guys, uh, I don't know if you haven't, if you've already opened up an Infinity account and mentioned us, you should be on that. If you don't have an Infinity account and you want one, um, just let me know because we can get you on the, the VIP list. You get a little bit lower rates. Um, we also have that for TradeStation and Thinkorswim as well. You can just send me an email. Just john, J-O-H-N at tradethemarkets.com. Um, it just it depends on your what you trade. I mean, it depends how many you know how many lots you trade and stuff like that. Okay, oh, appreciate it. Thank, appreciate it, Frank. Now that's good. Okay, it's good to know about the 4G. Um, a little off, off topic. You showed a squeeze within a squeeze slide the other day. On it, you had a globally positioned vertical line on both charts. How do you set those vertical lines up? Oh, the the vertical lines are on um, TradeStation. You just it's a feature on TradeStation. Hey John, I really te appreciate your efforts to teach options. Oh sure, Cali. Yeah, it's it's a passion of mine, and uh, as our futures.
Yeah, so the option lessons, I believe we're going to be posting them on the Simpler Options website. And uh, as they as they get, so this is an options course I'm teaching over the next several weeks, uh, just kind of a you know couple hours a week. Yeah, and we'll go in the we'll go over the squeeze within a squeeze. I'm actually going to cover that a lot in Chicago, but I'll share it with you guys too as well, obviously. All right, it's closed. Stick a fork in it. It's done. Yeah, no Shane, if you go to in Trade Station, if you just go to um let's see. Well, hold on here. I'll just show you. Uh in Trade Station, Let's see. Oops, that one's that one's off. Keep that one out of the way. Or what's that one? Oh, there it is. Drawing. So go to pointer tracking and then just go global. And when you hit global, it'll just go any chart you have with that on there. It'll it'll go on there. So you can have an hourly, a daily, a five minute. It's pretty useful. I got that. Put these around here, positioned. Uh, do I see any issues holding a short euro over the weekend? I mean, you, you're, always, you're always in danger of some kind of news like that, but technically, I mean, if you look at the euro here on, uh, let's move these out of the way. <laughs> I must be brain dead. I just typed in euro, E-U-R-O. Um, if you look at the euro on a daily chart right here, that is a big price break. Not, not only we break in this price trend line, okay? Um, did we actually almost take out? Now we're so, did we take it out? So the low here, 30.97, this previous low. Yeah, so we're just kind of at that low, but there's really no meaningful support at this point until you get down to 29.71, and then from there it's the low. So I like having exposure to euro short here. You know, having Greece default kind of helps that along too. <laughs> I hope that helps. Yep. Yeah, Google. Yeah, nice move on Google. Yeah, Russell's having a nice move up there. Nice rally. All right, let me make sure. Let me take a few minutes here. Make sure you guys have, if you have any questions, and we're going to wrap this up. Google, nice pin. Um, we'll review some of these charts you guys are asking about on the next uh, the options video, the super options video, so MasterCard, et cetera, et cetera. And that's generally what I do, guys, is... Uh, on the trade the markets videos, I review the futures markets, and then on the simpler options videos, I review options trades, stocks. Nice, you guys did a nice trade on Google. I'm really bummed I missed that one. Can you sell options after four? No, I think on the spiders they trade for a few more minutes after four, but on most stocks they're done. Yep, Apple did pin there. Yeah, we'll look at CME. I um, I think that's about it. Yeah, so what do we got going on here? So yeah, you guys saw a little bit of a grind higher. Yeah, Apple did pin at 545. Um, on Euro, let's see. Yeah, this high right here. I mean, if you're doing swing, that high of uh, 3292 is an awesome stop. If you want to risk quite that much, um, you know, it gets a little trickier. I think that's a good risk reward though, at least to start and then see if it can crack. And if it cracks, then we start bringing it down. If you do want to dive down a little bit and not risk that much, which is understandable because you don't want to turn it all, you know, have it profit turn into a loss kind of a thing. Uh, we can look at an hourly chart. 
And then if you drill into the hourly chart, you can see this is a 55 and a 21 period moving average on the hourly chart. You could actually keep a stop above that. You're talking about 32. So again, that's swing trades. If you're looking to get it tighter, you could go above that bar. You know, chances are high that you could get stopped out, but you know, the euro could just keep plunging, plunging along here. Any thoughts on the Fed's pending announcements next week? No, it's like stuff like that. I really just, you know, I'm just going to, they're going to say what they're going to say. So I try not to plan anything around that. Yep, can't have a good one. Thanks for the knowledge to create another profitable week. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it. Nice trade there in the options chat room on Google. I, I envy. I really wish I would have taken that one. That'd have been nice. But instead, I exercised with kettlebells and almost threw up. So that was my trade-off. But otherwise, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Um, we'll get the schedule for next week. Um, so next week is is my kids' spring break. However, I'm going to be in the office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll most likely be out Thursday, Friday. Um, unless the markets are really crazy, they'll understand. And then um, the following week, I'm going to the London Expo, and then we we'll got the Chicago seminar. So it's kind of a busy week. So I'm going to get a schedule down, um, make sure I get a lot of quality time in the room as well in between all this and leading up to it, of course. And um, you guys have a great weekend.